Welcome to the John Gets Games tutorial for Firenze. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules to the game as we are playing it, and we are going to go through one full game today. Now, I do want to mention that the only reason this video is being made is because it was requested and then voted on by the contributing producer-level supporters of the channel over at the Patreon campaign. Now, if you enjoy videos like this one and would like to see more of them in the future, then I do hope that you would consider directly supporting the channel, and you can learn more about doing that by going to patreon.com slash John Gets Games. The last thing that I I'd like to ask is that if you enjoyed this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Well, let's now jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our three different players. Now, before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles. I might make mistakes as I am showing you the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. What we are all trying to do is build a variety of different towers out of the different colored bricks in the game, and the way we get these bricks is by taking a card from this row. Every turn we must take one card, and you'll notice down below there is a cost, and that is the number of bricks that we have to spend in order to take that specific card, and we spend those by putting them down one at a time on the cards to the left of the card that is ultimately taken. After that, you get all of the bricks on the card, and then you can use those bricks in order to build up these towers in your construction area that all have bricks of the same color. And what you're trying to do is build towers that equal the heights on these towers indicated in the middle of the table, because you'll get those victory points once you complete the tower spots. Now you can mark that you completed it by taking one of your tokens, and you put it down onto the spot that you completed, and the game will end once any one player has placed all other seals onto the board. Now, in addition to getting bricks from the cards that we select, each of these cards has different effects as well. Some of them can be placed in hand and used later on. Some are an immediate effect, while others go into play permanently in front of you, giving an effect for the rest of the game. Now, some of these effects are actually bad, like this one over here that forces you to take a piece off of one of your towers. But of course, you might end up taking the card because you've decided the bricks on top of it are worthwhile. Now, I will explain the details of all of these cards, as well as the other mechanics, while we are playing, and I think on that note, let's actually start playing the game. Today, we are going to play as the blue player over here, and we are the starting player, so let's now take the first turn of the game. With that in mind, let's focus on our player board, and in particular on the left-hand side. Now, this shows the six steps that we are going to go through on our turn, and as you can see, some steps have a purple background, while others have a gray. Now, the purple background are mandatory steps, so that means every turn we must do step one, four, and six, while two, three, and five are optional. Now, we are going to always go in order, so we start at the top, and this says that we must take one card from the board. So, let's focus out here, and as you can see, underneath each of the cards, there is a brick cost printed. That means if we wanted to take this mason card, it would cost us two bricks, and the way we pay for that is we are going to place bricks down one at a time onto every card to the left of the card that we are taking, so we would place this one here and that one there and then be able to take this one. Now, as you can see, that added bricks onto these cards, which means the player who takes those cards will get the bricks that we paid in order to take this one. Now, I don't think we actually want to do this for our first turn. We start with two of these white bricks, and instead, let's just take the alchemist. As you can see, the leftmost one is zero because there are no cards to the left of it, so we don't have to pay any bricks for it. So that means we can take this card, and then we'll slide the rest of the cards down. After that, we can draw a new card from the top of the deck, and every time you draw a new card, you must take four random bricks out of the bag and put those down onto that card. Let's now focus back on our area where we can bring the alchemist over. As you can see, it had these four bricks on top of it, so we can add these into our storage. And as you can see, we now have three white, two red, and one yellow brick. The next thing to do is to look over here at this card. As you can see, it has an icon in the top left, and that is the personnel card icon. And for these personnel cards, you simply add them into your hand of cards, and on your turn at any point, you can play as many of these as you want, as long as you don't play more than one of the same specific type within a turn. So I think we are going to hold on to this. Uh, when we play it, that says that we can take one of the bricks from our storage and replace it with a brick color of our choice from the bag. And at this point, I don't think we need to do that yet. Now, it is worth noting that there is a hand limit of five cards total at the end of each round, so we have one out of those five, which means that is not something we have to worry about at this point. With the first step done, we can now move on to the second step, which is optional, and that says that we can take up to three bricks from our storage and place those onto a single card on the board in order to take one brick from that card and place it back into our storage. 
We can do this once during this step. And of course, that does mean that we would end up with two less bricks than we started, but we'd be hypothetically bringing back a brick of a specific color, which we need in that moment. In this particular moment, I don't think it makes sense to perform this step, so we can now move on to the third step, which is also optional, and this is where we can construct our towers. Now, as you can see, we have no towers under construction because they would be in this spot of our player board. And the way this step works is we can place between zero and six bricks down onto towers, and those can either build up new levels on towers that we've started, or they can start new towers. We have no limit to the number of towers that we can have in our area, and the only restriction for building is that each tower has to have all bricks of the same color. Now, if we look over here again, you can see on the right-hand side, there is a brick cost depending on the number of bricks that we are adding. This means if we add one brick, we have to spend zero bricks back to the bag, and the same goes if we add two. Now, if we want to add three bricks, then we will have to take a fourth brick and place that back into the bag. And if we want to add four bricks down, we will have to take three more bricks, so that is seven bricks total, and put those three back into the bag. Now, the color of the bricks that go back into the bag does not matter for the purpose of building these towers, but you, of course, need to have some surplus in order to make that happen. Now, with this in mind, you can tell that it gets more and more inefficient the more bricks you build in a specific turn. Well, for this first turn, I think I want to add three bricks, which means we are going to have to take another brick and place it into the bag. Now, in this case, let's take these three white bricks and add all of them to the same tower. Now, normally you'd place these towers going up like that, but for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna leave them on their side so that it's a little easier to tell how big they are on the camera. Now, we could have split this up into three individual towers if we wanted to, or two towers, but I think one tower is going to be best. And now we have to pay the cost for playing three bricks out, which is one more brick. And I think let's pay this yellow brick here. Now, part of me would love to start a red tower, but as you can see, if we were to add a fourth brick, that would cost two more bricks than the one that we already spent, and we don't even have enough to afford that. So this is the best that we can do on this turn. So we are now done constructing, which means we can move into the fourth step of our turn, which is mandatory. Now, the way this works is we have to tear down every tower in our construction area that we did not add to during the third step of this turn. Now, as you can see, we have just one tower and we obviously added to it because it didn't exist before that third step. But if, for example, we had this red tower over here that we did not add anything to on this specific turn, then that means this entire tower is going to be torn down and we will take half of those bricks, round it up and put them into the bag and the other half would go back into our storage. So this means it's very important that you are planning ahead to be able to continue to expand your towers up because even one turn of leaving a tower at its same height will cause it to be torn down. Once again, that's not happening here because we did add to this tower, so we don't have to tear anything down and we can now move into the fifth step, which is optional. Now this lets us fulfill as many commissions as we want. And in order to fulfill a commission, we have to have towers of specific colors and heights in our construction area. So let's focus out on the board, and as you can see, there are six different colored towers, which are associated with the six colored bricks that come in the game. Now, each step up on these towers is a spot for a single commission, and that wants a tower of the exact height that's printed over here on the left. That means this commission right here requires a red tower with exactly three bricks in it. A tower of four bricks would complete that commission, but you could not complete this one with a tower of four bricks because that would be too high. Now, when you complete a commission, you get the victory points listed in the right area. And I think what we want to do is complete this commission now. As you can see, this is the white tower, and we did build a white tower on this turn. And our tower has three bricks in it, which matches up with the lowest commission available. Now that means we can take one of our seals from our area and cover up that spot, and we are going to immediately get two victory points. So that brings us up to two, and for the rest of the game, this commission can no longer be completed, so that means the smallest white tower that can be completed now is a size four or greater. It's also worth noting that there are some neutral commissions out here that were placed at the start of the game, and these spots are blocked for the entire game. So in this play, we will never be able to score a size 6 white tower or a size 3 yellow tower, for example. Now, there are some other tokens out here which are balconies. Now, the way these work is you can only complete a balcony if it is the lowest value balcony currently out here on the map. As you can see, there's a level 1, 2, and then a 3, and a 4. So that means right now, 
this is the only balcony that can be completed, and until this specific balcony is completed, which takes a size 5 green tower, none of the other balconies can be completed, but as you can see, when you complete a balcony, the victory point reward is significantly higher for them. So we have completed the commission for that size 3 white tower, and the final thing that we do is take all of the bricks for that completed tower and place them back into the pouch. Now, as you can see, we started the game with seven seals and we've completed one of them, so we can complete six more towers before the game is over, and the number of seals that you have at the start of the game differs with the player count. It's also worth noting that during step five, we can complete as many commissions as we want, but of course, in this case, we just had one that was completable. Now that we've finished this step, we can move on to the final step of the round, which is mandatory, and this is called the check limits step. This is where we have to make sure we don't have too many bricks in our storage or too many cards in our area. Now, as you can see, we can store up to 10 bricks in our storage, and we have two, so we are fine. But if we had more than 10, then we would have to select bricks from our storage to go back into the pouch until we had reached that limit. Now, when it comes to these cards, we have to make sure that we have five or less in our area, which includes cards that we have in our hand, as well as cards that we have potentially played in front of us that are giving us ongoing effects. We haven't seen any of those cards just yet, so obviously we have just one, and we are underneath the limit. If we were over the limit, then we would have to discard cards until we got down to the limit, although you are not allowed to discard the celebration style cards, which I will describe later on in the tutorial. Now that we have checked our limits, our turn has come to an end, so that means we can now move on to the next player in clockwise order, which is going to be yellow. Now before we take their turn, I would like to talk about this Campanil card over here. Now there is one of these cards in the game, and as part of setup, it specifically says that if you are not experienced with Firenze, you should take this card out of the draw deck and not play with it. So for today's tutorial, we are not playing with the Campanile card, but I will describe how this card works near the end of the tutorial. So yellow can take their turn, and the first thing that they have to do is draw a card from the center. Now, just like us, they've decided to take the card all the way over here on the left, which means they don't have to pay any bricks. So then they will add all of these bricks into their storage. And as you can see, this card has a lightning bolt symbol. Now, this means that that card has to be performed immediately. And as you can see, this is called botch. Now, normally, this is not the kind of card that you want. That says that the player who took this has to remove one brick from one of their towers under construction and place that back into the pouch. Now, as you can see, the yellow player does not have any towers under construction, which means they can't actually perform this negative effect, so nothing actually happens from it, and that means this is an ideal time to take a negative card like this. Now, obviously, if they had towers, then that might have been a harder decision for them. So, this card can now be placed over here in a discard pile, and there is ways to have discarded cards come back into the draw deck, and I'll explain how that works later on. Now, at this point, the rest of the cards can slide over and a new one can be drawn. And of course, we have to draw four more random bricks from the bag. Now, they are going to skip step two and move right on to construction. As you can see, they do have four of these white bricks and three others. So if they wanted to, they could construct with four bricks doing that and then place three of these back into their pouch. But of course, that is somewhat expensive. They've decided instead to place three of these out starting a white tower, and that means they just have to spend one more brick back to the bag. After considering these options, they are going to send this yellow brick back. With this in mind, I'd like to draw your attention back to the board, and in particular to the bottom of each of these towers. Now, as you can see, it shows different numbers, and that is the number of each different color type of brick that is inside this bag. So that means some of these bricks are more valuable than others. There are 25 white bricks in the bag, whereas there are only eight of the purple bricks in there. When we glance back up, you can see that the farther to the right you go, the more victory points you get for the same level commission. Now, I would also like to point out that at the top of these towers, there are flags, and at the end of the game, the player who has placed the most commissions on that specific tower will get this number of victory points. So this is another reason why you might want to prioritize building the purple towers, because of course, the person who builds the most of them will get five victory points once the game is over. The last thing I'd like to point out over here are these tokens to the left. Now, these have a 1 on them, and that means that this will go to the first player who constructs a tower of size 5, and that will give them 1 victory point. And then there's one for the first level 6, 7, and 8 tower that is constructed in the game, and players get the associated victory points on the right side. So there is certainly a benefit for trying to shoot up to be the first to build a tower of those associated sizes.
Well, we can come back to the yellow player's turn, and they have paid the one brick to place three bricks out, so they have finished their construction phase, and now in the fourth phase, they don't have to tear any towers down, because of course they added at least one brick to the only tower they currently have. After that, they could complete a commission, but the commission for a size 3 white tower has already been completed by us, so that means this does not line up with any, so they can keep that in front of them, and move on to the final step, where they make sure they don't have more than 10 bricks or more than 5 cards, and they are easily within both of those limits. That means yellow is done, and the red player can now go. Now, just like the previous two turns, they've decided they don't want to spend any bricks. They like the look of this card. And more often than not, if you can take a card that's good for you with bricks that you like, it does make sense not to spend bricks to take other ones, but I'm sure we will see people spending bricks for particular cards soon enough. So they're going to take this card, which has two purple bricks, a green and a white, and this is a personnel card. That means that's going to go into their hand, and they can play this on their turn in order to reduce the building cost for construction by three. Next up, we can slide all of these cards over and see a new one that is going to get four more bricks on it. After this, they can now do a swap action, and they have decided to do that. So they can take any three of their bricks, and they'll take three white ones, and place these onto a card on the board, and then take one brick from that card and place it back into their storage. In this case, they've decided to place all three of these onto the smuggler so that they can take this purple brick and place that into their storage. After that, it's time for them to construct, and they've decided to build with four bricks. They're going to start by putting three out here as a purple tower, and then they're going to place a green brick down there as well. Now, that would normally cost them three bricks, which they don't actually have, but they do have this mason, which lowers the cost by three. So they would normally have to spend three, and that is going to cover the cost. So this is going to go into the discard pile, and they don't have to pay any more bricks. After that, they don't have to tear any towers down because they added at least one brick to all of them, and now they can complete commissions. In this case, they've decided they are going to complete a commission for a size three purple tower, which is going to get them two victory points. So that's going to tie them up at two with us. Then these three bricks will go back into the bag. And remember, there are only eight purple bricks total, which is why the red player decided to cash this out now instead of hoping to wait for the future and potentially risking having to tear down a purple tower because they couldn't find more purple bricks to add to it. All right, that has finished up their turn. So we can start by taking a card, and let's just take the free one. This is a great card overall, and it means we still haven't seen people pay bricks, but I'm sure that's going to start happening soon. Now this is going to come in with two green, one red, and a yellow brick, and this is another personnel card, which means we can play it at any time on any of our turns. Now this says princess, and it says that when we draw a card, we actually pay zero for it, even if it is farther down on the list. So this could let us get a card that we really want, even if it would normally be significantly expensive. Now we can add all of this into our storage, and then of course we need to add a new card to the row. In this case, that is going to be a saboteur. Next up, we could trade bricks, but I don't think we want to do that. And instead, let's move on to construction. Now, as you can see, we have the ability to start constructing a red, a green, and a yellow tower if we wanted to. Now, we also have this alchemist, which would let us send one brick back to the bag to take a brick of any color, which is a great thing to have in our back pocket. Now, I do think we should start with a red tower at least, and we could put two of these out, and of course, we could put all three of these out, but then if we don't complete this on this turn and want to add more in the future, we'd have to be committing to getting more red on future turns, but of course, we could get future red with this action as well as this alchemist. Now, there's also the fact that there is a level three red tower commission that we could complete on this turn with these three bricks, so maybe this does make sense. Now that is going to be costing us one brick at the moment, and if we wanted to build another brick out, we cannot actually afford it. So let's go for this. Uh, we completed a commission on our first turn, and we will do it again. We do, of course, have to spend one brick, so let's spend this yellow. And then we don't have to tear down any towers, and now we can complete this commission. That means we can place our seal on this spot, which is going to be worth two points to us, and then these will go back into the bag. Well, our turn is done, so yellow can go, and they've decided to take this smuggler. That means they have to place one brick onto every card to the left of their chosen card, which is just one, and again, this is a helpful reminder to show that that will cost just one brick. They're going to take a white brick from their storage and place that onto the storehouse fire, 
and then take the smuggler, which of course has more bricks than normal because the red player did an exchange with this card. So all of these will get added into their storage and then they can add this smuggler into their hand. This is a personnel card and that says that they can once take any brick from their own storage and swap it with a brick in one of their opponent's storage areas. Next up, we have to slide these over and draw a new card and that one is a disgrace. Now, the first thing I'd like to point out is the fact that there is no icon in the bottom right corner. The rest of the cards that we've seen have this, and that's because as part of setup, we take all of those cards and shuffle them onto the top of the deck. This means we have seen all of those starting cards and we are into the rest of the deck. And this is a celebration style card, which is just worth negative two points to you at the end of the game. And the only way to remove these from your hand is through the use of the partition card, which I'll talk about soon. Remember I said even if you go over your hand limit, you are not allowed to discard the celebration style cards, and this is why. There are celebration cards that give you points, but this disgrace is definitely not one people are going to want, but they might take it if it has the right bricks on top of it. Next up, Yellow has decided not to do an exchange, so now they are going to start constructing towers. Now they can build new towers as well as add to previous towers, and if they do not add at least one brick to every previous tower, then each of those towers will be torn down in the next step. So they definitely want to add at least one to this tower, and in this case, they're actually going to add two. Now that means they currently don't have to pay anything, but they have decided they would like to continue building, and after they consider the situation, they are going to start a yellow tower as well as a red tower. That means they have added four bricks, which is going to cost them three bricks total, and they are going to spend two white and a green back to the bag in order to pay for this. That leaves them with one brick still in their storage, and now they don't have to tear any towers down because they added to all of them, and now they can complete commissions. Now they do want to complete a white tower commission. As you can see, this has five bricks in it which means they can use it to place their seal there to complete that size five white commission. Now that is going to get them four victory points, bringing them up to four. And since this is the first size five tower completed, they can remove this tile and put it back into the box and gain the associated victory points. So in this case, that will give them one more point. That means they have more points than us, even though they've completed one commission compared to our two. Now these will get thrown back into the bag and that has finished up their turn because they are fine on their limits. This means the red player can go, and after considering the situation, they are going to buy this storehouse fire. That means they don't have to spend any of their bricks, and if we look down at the bottom, this is an immediate effect that says all players are going to have to lose three bricks from their storage back into the bag, but these do not count the bricks that came in on this card. So that means red is going to lose three bricks and they only had two, so these will go back to the bag. Yellow is also going to lose three bricks, but they only have one. And this is probably the reason why they were so aggressive with spending and building out these two towers on the previous turn, because they saw this coming and they figured they may as well spend those bricks in order to start towers instead of having them be lost to a storehouse fire that would likely happen before their next turn. Now over here, we are going to lose both of these green, which is pretty unfortunate. We were hoping to start working on a tower with those, and that's probably why the red player decided to do this now. They got some bricks that are pretty great for them, and overall, they think losing two white bricks compared to the blue for yellow and the two green for us was significantly better for them. So they can add these into their storage, and then this will go into the discard pile. After that, we can shift all of these over, and then we can reveal another card, and this is a new type. Now this is called a church card, and as you can see, it has that cross icon in the top. Now whenever a player takes this card from the row, instead of having it go into their hand, this actually goes into one of the four church spots on the board. The specific position doesn't matter, and then this will go to the player that satisfies that condition first. As you can see, this is a major privilege, and this means that the player who completes the first size four commission while this is out is going to discard this card and gain four victory points. So the player who takes this from the row will not necessarily get these rewards, but of course, they will get the bricks that are placed on top of it. So let's come back over here for the rest of the red player's turn. Now they are not going to exchange bricks, so now they are going to start constructing, and they would like to add two green bricks to this tower. That means currently they don't have to spend anything, 
but they've decided they are going to start a white tower as well, which does mean they now have to spend one brick, and they'll place this one back into the back. Now, after that, they don't have to tear any towers down because they added at least one brick to each of them, and now they can move on to commissions where they are going to complete this commission here. As you can see, there is an open spot for a size 3 green tower, so they can place their seal on top of it and gain 2 victory points. Finally, we can see that they are good on bricks as well as cards, and I think for the rest of the video, I'll only call this step out when it actually matters because a player has to discard something. So we can see that the red player is done with their turn, which means we can now take our turn. At the moment, we don't have any bricks in our storehouse, so normally we would only be able to take this card because it's the only one that's free, but we do have this princess personnel card, which we could use in order to take any of these cards without spending any bricks. Now, I think keeping this in our back pocket is good because on our turn, let's just take this one. That's a great card, and these bricks are pretty good as well. So we can add these into our storage, and this is another personnel card. Uh, now the patrician says that you can play this when you take a card from the row in order to negate an immediate effect, but you can only do that on the turn where you take that card from the row. For example, if we had taken that storehouse fire and we had a patrician in our hand, we could discard the patrician to stop the storehouse fire from happening for everybody, but if an opponent picked the storehouse fire, our patrician cannot stop it. Now the other reason patricians are good is because they let us discard any card that we have in our hand, and this is the only way to get rid of celebration cards that we don't want, like this disgrace over here. So it's possible that our opponents might avoid this card by stacking bricks up on it, and then we could take it and then get rid of it with this patrician later on. So we are going to add that into our growing hand of personnel cards. We've got three of them now, and after that we can slide the rest of these cards over. The next card will be drawn, and that is a new type of card. Now, this is a workshop, and it is a building. When you take this card, you actually place it face up in front of you, and it does count against your hand limit, and it has an ongoing effect for the rest of the game. And it's worth noting that you are not allowed to have multiple copies of cards like this one in front of you. Uh, you can take a second copy from the display, but it goes immediately into the discard pile. This workshop is pretty great. It simply reduces the cost in bricks during your construction phase by one. Next up, we have to add four random bricks. And now we can move on with our turn. I don't think we want to exchange anything. And now we can start constructing our towers. For the first time in the game, we cannot actually build a tower that we can immediately fulfill. So with that in mind, we need to pay attention to the bricks that are out here coming down for future turns. We obviously are flexible because we have a princess and an alchemist to get a brick of a specific color that we need, and I think we should certainly start building a yellow tower. Now that has taken two bricks, which costs us nothing, and if we want to place another brick, we'll have to get rid of the other one. And honestly, I kind of like having a blue and a red around, so I think this will be a low construction turn. We won't pay anything, and of course we don't tear anything down or complete any commissions with just a size 2 tower, so that has finished our turn. This means the red player can go, and they would love to take this wholesaler because it has red and yellow bricks on it so that they could use those to continue both of their towers. Unfortunately, because of that storehouse fire, the yellow player does not have any bricks in their storage though, so they must take this card here. Now the architect is a good card, but they are bummed they are not taking a yellow brick because that is going to make it more difficult to construct this. They could potentially do an exchange, but they'll have to think about that soon. Now they can add all of these bricks into their storage, and as you can see, the Architect is a personnel card that, when played, lets you complete a commission for one higher or one lower than the actual size of the tower that you are submitting. So this one could potentially make you much more flexible trying to get specific commissions out there on the board. After that, we can slide these cards down and reveal a new one, and this is an immediate effect card that's called Tribute. Now, there's uh, quite a few icons going on here, but what this says is as soon as somebody takes this card, then all players are going to have to pay one brick of the color associated with each of the towers that they currently have in construction. So if you have a red and a yellow tower of any size, you will have to pay a red and a yellow brick from your storage back to the pouch. For every tower, you cannot pay one brick of the matching color. You actually rip that tower down in the same way you normally do if you did not add anything to the tower. 
So with this tribute on the market row, we all have to keep that in mind and plan ahead to make sure that we can afford it. Of course, if you don't have any towers when the tribute happens, then you won't be affected and you'd be pretty incentivized to take that in order to make life harder on your opponents. Now at this point, we can add four random bricks on top of it. At this point, yellow can continue on with their turn, and they could spend three bricks from their storage in order to take one from the board. That could be yellow to help them build out this tower, and technically, they could afford to do that, but they're not sure if spending these bricks is a better cost than just letting this tower be destroyed. They do have a smuggler card in their hand, which lets them swap a brick from their storage with one of their opponents, but unfortunately for them, neither of their opponents currently has any yellow bricks. Now, they are strongly considering this exchange, but the reason they are not going to do it is because if they did that and they added the red and the yellow to their towers, they would have no bricks in front of them, and they would have no control over what card they took on their next turn, and it's entirely possible that that card might not have a yellow and a red brick on it to let them continue to build those towers. So they think that is probably too fragile a system. Instead, they're just going to let this tower be destroyed and move on with their turn. Of course, that hasn't happened yet. They can now start construction, and if they don't add this red to that tower, then it will be torn down, and they don't want that to happen. So they've added one brick, and then they will add another brick over here to start a green tower. They've got another green in their storage, which they can use to grow that on their next turn, which gives them some flexibility, and of course that leaves them with a couple of bricks in their storage that they could spend, so that they have, again, more flexibility for the cards they take on their next turn. So at this point, they are done constructing, and they don't have to pay anything because they only added two bricks. And then in the fourth phase, they have to tear down every tower they did not add to, and they did indeed not add to this tower. Now when this happens, they take half the bricks, round it up, and put those back into the bag, and the other half goes into their storage. Since there is just one brick here, when you round up, that means this will go back into the bag. After that, they could complete commissions, but these towers are definitely not big enough to do that, even with their architect. So at this point, they are done with their turn. So the red player can go, and they have one brick in their storage, which means they can afford to take either of these two. Now, if they took the saboteur, they would have the white that they need to expand this tower. Uh, but if they didn't, they could take the wholesaler and use this white to expand that tower as well. Realistically, they do like the effect of the saboteur more than the wholesaler. This is a personnel that just removes one brick from any tower of their opponents and puts that back into the bag, so that could definitely mess with people's plans. Whereas the wholesaler lets you take all of the bricks from any one card on the row and put them back into the bag and then bring an equal number of bricks out. So that's a little bit more situational and certainly less interactive. Now, while they do slightly prefer the saboteur, they don't prefer it enough to spend a brick, so they're just going to take the wholesaler. After that, we can slide these down and reveal a new card, and that is Collapse. Now, this is an immediate effect, and it says that the player who took this card must immediately completely tear down one of their towers, and all of the bricks go into the bag. Of course, if you don't have any towers under construction when you take this, then you do not suffer any negative effect. So, let's place four bricks down on top of that. And then the red player can move on with their turn. They are not going to do an exchange, and they are going to construct... They want to add this white brick there so that they don't have to tear this tower down, and then they are going to start a yellow tower. Now, they could add another brick, although that would cost them one of these two over here. They'd probably spend the red one in this case, though, and looking out at the cards coming up, they don't see that many red bricks overall, so they decide they don't want to chance it. They'll go ahead and continue to build up this yellow tower. So they can spend this red brick, and now they don't have to tear any towers down, and they're not going to complete any commissions, so that has finished their turn. This means we can go, and our main priority is picking up at least one more yellow brick, and there is one there. So let's go ahead and take this card with the saboteur action. Now we can add all of this into our storage, and this is actually our fourth card. Remember, we have a hand limit of five, so we are starting to approach that limit. After that, we can slide all of these down and reveal a new card. This is another celebration card, and it's called Recognition. Now, when you take this card, it goes into your hand, and it will most likely be there for the rest of the game. And when the game is over, it's worth one victory point for every one of the level three and four seals that you have placed out on the board. Currently, we have a couple of those. We have two of the threes. So that means if we took this right now, it would already be worth two points to us at the end of the game. 
Moving on, I don't think we should do an exchange, and now we have to construct. We certainly want to add this yellow so that we don't have to tear this tower down. And in order to actually complete one of the yellow commissions, the lowest value is four. That means if we had another yellow, we could actually complete this right now, and we could use our alchemist to get another yellow. When we look back out at the row of cards, we can see that there are three yellows to choose from, and I think considering the fact that we could always play our princess to take any of these, let's go ahead and hold off on the alchemist until a moment when we need it more, and perhaps we could use the princess to take a yellow, and then also use the alchemist to get an even higher commission completed. Now at this moment we've only added one brick, so we should certainly add at least one more, if not more, because we have quite a few bricks that we could spend. Uh, if we wanted to, we could start both a red and a blue tower, or we could also commit to the purple, although that seems a little bit risky at this point. There are a couple of purple bricks coming out on the row, but not that many, and the next purple commission requires five. Now, I think let's just go ahead and start a red and a blue tower. Once again, we have a alchemist as well as a princess, which makes us significantly more flexible for getting the specific bricks that we need to continue to build up these towers. Now, of course, we put three bricks down, so that's going to cost us one brick, and we can discard one back to the bag, and it'll certainly be a white one. After that, we don't have to tear anything down, and we don't complete any commissions, so our turn is done. That means the yellow player can go, and they have decided to spend both of their bricks in order to take this workshop. Now, they are going to put the green brick over there on the disgrace, and the white brick on that major privilege, which now has four of them. And that means they can take this workshop, which does have a green and a red, which are the two colored bricks that they really want. Now, this is also going to get them a workshop, which they will have for the rest of the game, and that has a great effect of having them spend one less brick as payment. So that means they can now build three bricks for free instead of the normal two. Next up, we can slide these down and reveal a new card, and that's a warehouse. Now, this is another building type. As you can see, once you have this in front of you, you can hold up to 15 bricks in your storage at any given time, and you can hold an unlimited number of cards for the rest of the game. Moving on with their turn, they are not going to exchange, but they are going to construct. They will add a green to this tower so that they don't have to tear it down, and they will add a red to that tower so that they don't have to tear that one down either. Now, they can technically add another brick without actually having to pay any costs, and they've decided to place this yellow brick down there, starting a yellow tower. Actually, after considering the bricks out here on the row, they've decided instead to start a white tower. It is true that there are just two spots currently available on the white tower at the four and the seven spot, but also there's just a lot of white bricks out here, and they're thinking maybe they could actually be the one to get all the way up to the seven tower, because the first seven tower is going to be worth three victory points. And if at that moment the major privilege over here was out, then that seven tower would also be worth four more points, so they think that's a better thing for them to plan ahead for. So they've finished construction and they don't have to tear anything down, and now they have decided they are going to use this architect to complete a red commission. Part of them wanted to hold on longer and potentially use this for a commission that's worth even more points later on, but they think they are risking it having too many towers under construction at once. Now this architect is going to add one or subtract one from the height of this tower, so that's going to be three plus one, which is four, and that means they are able to complete this level four commission on the red tower, which will give them three victory points. Well, yellow is done, which means the red player can go, and they've decided to spend their yellow brick placing this on top of the disgrace, which now has five different color bricks on it, so that they can take this major privilege. Now, they are going to take all of these bricks, but then remember, this is a church-style card, so instead of going into their area, it will go face up onto any one of these four church spots on the board, and again, the specific place does not affect the evaluation of the card. Now, this means that the next player to complete a level 7 tower will get four extra points, and then this card will be discarded. Next up, we can slide these cards down, and the next one is Renaissance. Now, this is an immediate effect when it is chosen, and that simply says that you shuffle all of the cards from the discard pile along with the Renaissance card in with the deck to then make a new draw deck. This is the only way that cards in the discard pile come back into the deck. Well, let's put four bricks on top of it. And now they can move on with their turn. 
They are not going to exchange, and when they construct, they are just going to add two bricks. That will be one white and one yellow, so that they don't have to tear either of those down, and neither of these will turn into commissions for them. Now, that means that their turn is done which means we can go and we have a couple of bricks that we could spend. Of course, we also have a princess and a patrician to keep in mind within our hand. Now, this patrician would let us get rid of the negative two points that would come with a disgrace. This does have a yellow, a blue, and a red on it, and those are the three colors that we need to continue expanding our towers. So I think that is probably going to be what we do for this turn. So let's go ahead and take this along with a whole bunch of these bricks. This will be added into our hand, and normally we would be stuck with these negative two points for the whole game, but we'll probably use our partition to get rid of it later on. Now, we aren't in a rush to do that just yet. We are still at our hand limit for the end of the turn. You can, of course, go above that hand limit before you check once the turn is over. Now, at this point, we can slide all of this down and reveal a new card, and we found another architect. This is a type of card that we have already seen. Well, let's continue on with our turn. We don't need to do an exchange, I don't think, and now we can start construction. Now, I do think that we want to add a red to the red tower, a blue to the blue tower, and a yellow to the yellow tower. So that means at this point, we currently have to spend one brick to pay for all of that. Now, in this moment, I think it probably makes sense for us to not add more bricks. So let's just spend one white to pay for the three bricks that we've already built. Now that we are done constructing, we don't have to tear anything down because we added at least one brick to each of our towers. And then for the commission phase, I think it's probably too risky to leave all three of these up. Let's go ahead and complete a yellow tower commission at a height of four. As you can see, that is going to get us three victory points. Now, while we are looking over here, I just realized that the next card on the row is Tribute. And when that happens, we are going to have to pay one brick of the associated color for every one of our towers. And right now, we don't have any red or any blue in our area. So that means we are at risk to potentially have either or both of these be torn down. So one thing we might want to do is play the alchemist right now in order to get rid of maybe this white brick and then gather a blue or a red one to cover it. I think that the blue probably makes more sense. It would really be awful to lose both of these towers. So yeah, let's go ahead and play the alchemist now and we will turn this white brick into a blue one. We can do that by placing the white back in the bag and then we can search through the bag to find a blue brick. At the moment, there are quite a few of them out here on the card row, but we have found one over here. So now we are safe at least for this tower. And since there's a lot of blue out there, in fact, one blue on every card, we should be safe to add on to that tower on our next turn if we have to get rid of this as part of the tribute. Well, I think our turn is done. We have four cards, so we are under the limit and don't have to discard any. This means it's now the yellow player's turn, and they've decided they are going to take this tribute. They could pay one brick to skip over that, but then they run into a collapse, which is not really something they want at this point. They would rather hold on to this and just make this tribute happen right now. Now, they do get all four of these bricks, and they could potentially use these bricks to pay for the tribute, so that is one benefit of being the person to make the tribute happen. Now, once again, this means all players need to pay one brick back to the bank for each one of their towers that they currently have under construction. Starting with yellow, they are going to pay a green, and then it does not actually make sense for them to pay this white, because then they won't have any white to add to that construction. They do have a smuggler, which they are planning on using to uh, swap one of these bricks with one of our greens in order to continue with the green construction. So yeah, they are not going to pay the tribute on this tower, and it will then be torn down, and half of it rounded up will go into the pouch. Of course, this white should still be in their hand because they decided not to pay it for tribute. Now over here, the red player is going to pay a white for that tower, but unfortunately they do not have a yellow to pay for this tower. They were not planning quite far enough ahead to be able to make sure that both of these stayed standing. Now that means that this will get torn down, half of it will go to the bag, and the other half will go back into their storage. So these will go away. And then over here, of course, we have to pay one blue for that tower, and we don't have a red for this tower, so unfortunately that investment is also gone. So that means all of these bricks will be added back into the pouch. Well, next up we can slide all of these down, and the next card is a monument. Now, this is a celebration card, and it is special because when this is chosen from the row, it does not necessarily go into the hand of the player who took it. 
Instead, in that moment, we check to see who has the tallest tower under construction, and that player will get this even if it's not their turn, and it will be worth three points to them at the end of the game. If there is a tie where multiple players have the highest tower, then instead this card is sent to the discard pile. Let's now focus back over here where Yellow is going to play their Smuggler, which lets them swap one of their bricks for a brick in another player's storage, and they're going to swap this white brick with one of our green bricks, and now they're going to skip the exchange and move right into construction where they're going to add this green brick onto that tower. Now, technically, they could add two more bricks if they wanted to risk it. There are a bunch of blue bricks out there on the market, and currently there is a commission spot for a size 3 and a size 4 tower if they feel confident that they could complete one of those. After thinking it through, they've decided to risk it, so they're going to start a blue tower, but they're not going to put a third brick out, even though that would not cost them any more bricks. Now that is going to complete their turn. They don't have enough bricks in this tower to complete a green commission at this point. This means it is the red player's turn, and they've decided to send a yellow brick onto the collapse so that they can pay for this recognition. That means they will get all of these bricks, and again, this is a celebration card worth one point for every one of their seals on the level three and four spots out here on the board, and currently red is on two of those, so this is currently worth three points to them at the end of the game. Next up, we can slide these down, and the next card is a Ponte Vecchio. Now, this is a building, and it says as long as this is in front of you, which it will be for the rest of the game, whenever you do an exchange action, instead of sending three bricks out to take one back, you can send two bricks out to take one back, so that is a much better exchange rate. Let's continue on with the red player's turn, and they are not going to do an exchange, and after that, they are going to construct. Now, they've decided to add three of these bricks to their white tower, so that is already up to a size 6, although the size 6 commission spot on the board is blocked off with a neutral seal, so they need to get up to a size 7 now in order to complete this, and that does appear to be their plan. Now, they added three bricks, which means they have to spend one brick, and they've actually decided to spend this purple brick. They are the rarest brick in the bag, but they don't see themselves building up a purple tower anytime soon. They think it's more likely they'd build up a yellow or a blue one. So this is the one that they've decided to pay. Now, after that, they don't have to tear down any of their towers, and they are not completing a commission because, again, the specific spot is full. Once again, you have to be exact, so they could not use this size 6 white tower for this size 4 commission, even if they wanted to. Well, red is done, which means we can go, and I think we have now found the turn where we play our princess card. There are some pretty good options out here, but this architect, I think, is excellent for us. It has a blue, and the architect is great because we can use it to fulfill a commission for plus one or minus one, and that is very flexible. So we will spend this princess, which means we don't have to spend any bricks for this, and we can add all of these into our storage, and then, of course, add this architect into our hand. Now we can slide these over, and the next card is a minor privilege. Now this says that when it is taken, it goes into one of the church spots, and at that point, the next player to complete a size 5 commission will get two extra victory points, and then this card will be put into the discard pile. Well, let's now continue on with our turn, and I don't think we want to do an exchange, so now we can start construction. I think we should certainly add a blue onto that tower there, and there is a commission spot for a size 3 and a size 4 tower, so I think it might make sense just to complete this commission to cash in another seal so that we don't risk having to tear this tower down. I suppose there are three blue bricks out here already, so there's no way that both of our opponents could get rid of all three of them, although it's possible the only one left will be on collapse, which would cause us to rip down one of our towers. Now, interestingly enough, we could use our Patrician on a future turn when taking a card like Collapse to negate that effect. Uh, also, we could plan ahead, expecting to take the Collapse and maybe build a size 1 tower to be a sacrifice for this card if we think that is worth it. Now, I do think it's unlikely that Collapse will be taken before our next turn, and if that happens, then it might have even more bricks on it, so maybe we should actually plan ahead and leave this one up to try and get more points for it for completing a higher level commission. Uh, either way, at this point, we have only added one brick so far, and I think let's go ahead and add two more. We can start a green tower and a white tower, and this white one will most likely be our sacrificial tower, uh, with us expecting to probably take that collapse card. 
Now, this does mean we have to spend one of our bricks, and we could spend this white uh, in the knowledge that we are not actually planning on building this up into a real tower, and I think that is probably going to be good enough. I suppose there is something to be said for getting rid of this purple if we don't think we're going to be constructing a purple tower in the future, but maybe we should hold on to this to try and piece things together to make a purple tower commission later on. Yeah, let's go ahead and spend the white. Well, we finished construction and we don't have to tear anything down and I am deciding to invest in this blue tower more so we are not going to complete that commission. Well, it's now the yellow player's turn and they are not going to pay any bricks. They kind of want the stack of purple bricks to go along with the purple that they have already, but they need to get at least one green if they don't want to rip this tower down. So they are just going to take the collapse that does have five bricks on it, which is nice but it is going to rip down one of their towers and all of those bricks will go back into the bag. In this case, they are okay ripping down this size one tower so that they can keep growing this green tower over here. Now that is going to be discarded. We can slide the rest of these down and the next card is a flood. That's an immediate effect that says when this is taken, all players are going to lose one third of the bricks from their storage rounded up, not including the bricks on this card that the player who took it is going to gain. So that means we can bring out four more bricks. And now yellow can continue on with their turn. They're not going to do an exchange, so now they can construct. They are certainly going to add one green brick to the top of there. And then they're going to start a yellow tower. That means they've spent three bricks total, which for them costs no bricks because of their workshop. They're done constructing and they don't have to tear anything down. And if they wanted to, they could complete a green commission, but it appears they've decided to wait. The next step up is the first of the balconies, which is worth seven victory points compared to the three of this other commission that's just one brick shorter. They figure waiting and putting one more brick to get four more points is worth it to them. This means yellow is done, so red can go, and they are going to take this warehouse. They don't see a reason to spend their bricks, considering this warehouse has the white brick that they need to complete a massive commission for them. Also, this warehouse is kind of nice. It lets them hold up to 15 bricks in their storage and an unlimited number of cards. So far, we haven't really seen the players hoarding a bunch of bricks, but part of that is because we have been completing a bunch of the lower level commissions, and as the game goes on, we have to hoard more bricks as we try to build up much larger towers, and of course, it's better to build them quickly rather than risk uh, having the towers be ripped down, but of course, the more bricks that we add, the more inefficient that turn is going to be. Now we can slide all of these over, and the next card is simple. It's a celebration card that's worth three victory points to the person who has it at the end of the game. Well, red can continue on with their turn, and they are not going to exchange, and then they are going to add one brick over there, making this a size 7 tower. They could add another brick if they want to without having to spend anything, but they've actually decided not to risk it right now. They would rather hold on to these and see what their opportunities look like on their next turn. So they don't have to rip anything down, and now they can complete a size 7 white commission. This is a pretty big deal because that is going to give them six points immediately, which brings them up to 10. Then this major privilege will be finished. That is going to give them four more points, bringing them up to 14. And then this is the first size seven commission. So that is going to give them three more points. So overall, that was a 13 point play. Red is feeling pretty good about that. And that has finished up their turn. That means we can go and we certainly want a blue brick. So let's take this Renaissance card and that means we are going to immediately take this card along with all of the cards in the discard pile and we are going to shuffle those up with all of the cards that are in the deck and make a new deck to draw from. After that, we can slide all of this down and reveal the next card, which is the Renaissance again. Okay, well, we have to put four bricks down on it and it looks like we are going to be shuffling that deck up again sooner than expected. Well, let's continue on with our turn and I don't think we should do an exchange. So now let's construct. We can add a single blue brick up there, as well as at least one green brick. Uh, we don't have any white bricks left, so it seems our plan to have this be sacrificial didn't work out because uh, unexpectedly one of our opponents did take that collapse. I really thought we would get that on our turn, so we don't have to worry about this one. Now we've added two bricks, so we could add a third one, which would be another green, I think, but that would cost a brick, and I don't think that really helps us out. Let's just stick over here with a free placement of two and then hold on to these for the future. Remember, we can hold up to 10, and this is five, so we have quite a bit of flexibility there. 
Now at this point, we are done constructing. So now we can tear down this tower because we did not add anything to it. And now if we want to, we can complete a commission. Now I think we probably should because a size four commission over here on the blue tower would be worth three victory points to us. Now part of me wants to wait and get another brick because we could add our architect to that size five and then do this six up here. But at the moment, the only blue out here is on the flood spot. And that is not necessarily going to be a spot that we can take on the next turn. And I certainly don't think it's worth planning around. I guess that would be worth twice as many points though. You know what? I think let's risk it. I've changed my mind. We can see that the flood also has a green on it. So that would help us build up our green tower as well. I certainly hope this decision does not turn around to bite us, but this is what we're going to go for. Now, I think that means we are done with our turn. So the yellow player can go. And they've decided to put a single white over here onto the monument to pay for this Ponte Vecchio. Now, that means for the rest of the game, whenever they do an exchange, they do two bricks for one, which is certainly a much better exchange rate. In addition to that, they get all of these bricks here. And then we can see the next card from the deck. And that one is Botch. We haven't seen this since the very beginning of the game. That forces the player who takes this to remove one brick from one of their towers and put it back into the bag. Well, the yellow player can do an exchange at two for one instead of three for one, but they've decided they don't need to do that just yet. And now they're going to construct. They're going to start by adding a green brick there as well as a yellow brick so that neither of these towers need to be torn down. And then they've decided to build one more brick with this red. They, of course, don't have to pay anything because they do have this workshop. Now, after they're done constructing, we can see that they don't have to tear any towers down. And then they are going to complete a green commission with this size five tower. As you can see, that is this spot, which has the first balcony on it. And remember, these balconies must be completed in order. So this is going to give them seven victory points instead of the four. And then that will go back into the pouch. Yellow had eight, so now they are up to 15. This also means that players are now allowed to complete a size six red, which would give 10 victory points instead of the normal six. So yellow is done with their turn, which means the red player can go, and they do not want to take this monument. If they did, that would give three victory points to us because we currently have the tallest tower under construction. Uh, but of course, if they skipped over that, they make the monument even better. And then we would potentially take it, although they can tell that we don't want the monument right now because it doesn't have any blue on it. Uh, we could, of course, do an exchange to get a blue if we need to. But uh, yeah, they've decided they are going to skip the monument for now and move over to the minor privilege. Now, they are going to put a yellow down. Actually, no, they're going to put a blue down. They don't think it makes sense for themselves to try and push for a blue tower commission at this point. This means they can take all the bricks on the minor privilege, and then it will go up into a church card spot. After that, these will slide down, and the next card is a mason, which gives you a minus three discount when you are constructing on a turn. Next up, red is going to start constructing, and they are simply going to put two bricks out, uh, starting nice and slow. They have a bunch of other bricks in their area, but they don't see a reason to blitz up super fast at this point. Uh, currently, there's just one other purple out there on the board, so they figure they can trickle out with these purples for now. Well, red is just about done with her turn, although they notice now that we have a blue tower that we're making, and they realize it makes no sense to put a blue uh, brick over here, uh, so they certainly would have put a different brick like this yellow one down instead. Uh, sorry about that. I think this is a more accurate situation for what would have happened if we were actually different players playing. Now it's time for us to go, and I think we probably still take the monument. It does not have a blue on it, but we could, of course, exchange for the blue that we need. And we do have a green in our storage so that we won't have to tear down that tower. So I think this is worth it. Also, this is just a bunch of uh, bricks that we can use for a variety of things. Now, again, the monument is going to immediately go to the player who has the largest tower under construction. And that is us with a size four to the three over here. So we can add this into our hand. And we currently have five cards in our hand. Although we can, of course, discard our partition to get rid of this disgrace at any time on our turn. Now we can move all of this stuff over and then draw a new card, and that is a princess. Moving on, it's time to exchange, and we are certainly going to exchange three of something in order to take this blue. Now we do have a bunch of white, and currently the only white commission out there can be completed with four, although we do have four, so completing that commission might be pretty good for us. Uh, now when it comes to the yellow commissions, a size five one is out there, and we only have three yellow. 
And we can also tell that yellow is pushing towards that. So if we swap even more yellow on there, then that would potentially make that even better for them. I guess this is kind of tricky. Pretty much no matter what we do, it's going to be giving good options to our opponents. You know what, I think let's just send a purple along with a couple of yellows because I really would like to grab that other white commission. Uh, maybe this is a bad idea, but it's the thing that we are going to go for. And then of course we can take this blue and add that into our area. Now it's time to construct, and we do know that there is a flood on the horizon which is going to get rid of a third of our bricks in storage. With that in mind, we should probably spend bricks where we can, and of course we are going to add this blue as well as that green, and any other bricks that we put out are going to start making us have to pay for things. Now that's fine, I just said we wanted to push towards trying to complete that size 4 white commission, so maybe we should start a white tower. If we did that, then we are currently at 4 bricks, which would cost us 3 of these. We could spend all three of those, and then we'd have these available. Um, although, unfortunately, one of them will be lost to the flood because you do lose a third of them rounded up. I suppose white bricks are somewhat easy to come by, so let's just go with this plan. Uh, now, at this point, we do not have to tear anything down, and now we can complete this commission. And, of course, we had planned on using this architect when we did it so that it is effectively a size 6. That means we can place our seal over there, which is going to get us six victory points, which is good considering we are lagging behind. So six plus seven is going to bring us up to 13. After that, we are the first player to complete a size six commission, so we will get two more victory points, and that means we are actually at 15 points total and tied with the yellow player on the track. Of course, we aren't accounting for things like the uh, celebration card that we have in our hand. All right, it's the yellow player's turn, and while a flood is going to be bad for them, it will also be bad for everybody, and this does have yellow and red on it, which are colors that they like, so they are going to take the flood without spending any of their bricks. This does mean that everybody is going to lose one-third of their bricks rounded up. We can see yellow has four, and one-third of that is a little bit more than one, so they have to lose two of their bricks, and they'll get rid of a white and a blue. Next up, the red player has six bricks, so they are going to have to lose two of them and they will ditch a green as well as a blue. Lastly, we have two bricks, and a third of that rounded up is going to be one, so we will lose one of these. After that, the yellow player is going to get all of these bricks here, and then we can slide these cards down, and the next one is a patrician. After that, yellow could exchange, but they've decided to pass on that, and now they will construct. They're going to start by adding two bricks, one to each of their towers, so that neither will be torn down. And then they're going to add another brick onto this yellow tower. Currently, they don't have to pay anything, though. Now, if they wanted to add yet another brick, that would get them to 3 minus 1 or 2. And that would have them discarding bricks that they don't really want to. So they're actually going to hold at this point. And now they don't have to tear any towers down. And they do want to complete a size 5 yellow tower commission. That is going to give them 4 victory points, which will bring them up to 19. Well, that's finished up their turn, and red can go. Part of them would really love to take this mason, considering it has purple and red, which are both colors they are working towards, but they would have to actually sacrifice some purple and red to get it. So instead, they're just going to take this one. It has four green on it, surprisingly, and it is worth three victory points at the end of the game. And they already have a red and a purple in their hand, so they don't have to worry about getting new bricks to make sure their towers don't fall down. So these are going to slide over, and the next card is a Collapse. After that, they are going to pass on the exchange and now construct. They will obviously add one to each of these towers so that neither of them fall down. And then they've decided to place a third one out, which is going to cost them a brick, and they will get rid of this blue. And they figure they'll save the rest of these green for a future turn. Now, they're not going to complete any commissions, so that has finished their turn. This means it's time for us to go, and with just one brick, I don't think it makes sense to jump over Renaissance to get to Botch. So let's keep this and just take Renaissance. Now that is going to cause us to shuffle up the discard pile of one card with the deck, so we can add a new deck with all of these over here. Then after that, we can slide the rest of these down, and the next card is going to be a Tribute, uh, and that's certainly something we all have to keep an eye on. Next up, when we look over here, we did not get any green. So let's do a exchange, getting rid of, I guess, two yellow and a white to get a green. At the moment, there are three greens out here already. 
So I think let's probably go for the farthest one out so that it is most likely to be an option for us on our next turn to take these bricks back by taking that card. So we can add this into our storage and then we can construct. We can add a green there and a white without paying anything. And I would love to put another white on there to complete that commission, but we don't have any more bricks to pay for that. So we are just going to add two bricks. We don't tear any towers down. And let's now complete a green commission of size four. As you can see, that is going to get us three victory points, which will bring us up to 18 points. Now, at this moment, we have two of these seals left, and it's probably uh, well past time for me to talk about how the game ends. Now, as soon as any player places their last seal out, that player will take this five victory point token, which is worth five points at the end of the game, and then every other player will get one more turn. Uh, once all of that happens, we can move into end game scoring, where players will score for all of the celebration cards in their hand, which could be positive or negative points. Now, I'll talk about that once we actually get there, because we are going to be playing through the entire game today. Now, before we move on, I just realized that the yellow player actually completed a size 5 tower somewhat recently while this minor privilege was out, so they should have gotten these two more points, which would put them up to 21, and this should also have been in the discard pile and then shuffled back in with that renaissance, so I'm just going to give this deck another quick shuffle. Well, our turn is done, so that means the yellow player can go, and they have decided to place a green brick over here on botch because they don't want that, but they do want the mason. So this is going to be a one-time use card that lowers the building cost by three on one of their turns. After that, we can slide these down, and the next card is another warehouse. Moving on, the yellow player has decided not to exchange, and then for their construction, even though they could build three times, they are just going to do two. They don't really want to commit to the purple or the yellow just yet. Uh, you know, there is actually quite a bit of yellow out there on the board, so they've decided, yeah, they should make use of the fact that they can do a third one without paying for it. Uh, they will risk it and put a yellow one out there. There is a tribute coming down the line, but they still feel like this is probably not the worst idea. Next up, they don't have to tear any towers down, and they are not going to complete any commissions, so that has finished their turn. Although I just realized they put this flood card into their hand, so that should technically be in the discard pile. I don't remember if it was there before or after the last renaissance, so let's just leave it over there in the discard pile for now. All right, it's the red player's turn, and they have realized that it was a mistake for them to start building this purple tower when they could not guarantee they could build it up to a size that would score for them. Uh, they were risking it, hoping to see more purple, but it seems like the yellow player has been hoovering them up. We can see they have three, and red has three, and there's only eight of these bricks total. So uh, red has decided they are actually going to use this purple brick and place it onto the botch to pay for this princess. That effectively means they are acknowledging that they're going to have to tear this tower down, which is a bummer, but it seems the risk of playing this out early and efficiently is not going to pay off for them. Now that is going to give them a princess card, which is quite flexible, and they could use that to take any card without paying for it in the future, and these bricks are pretty good for them as well. Now we can slide these down, and the next card is a wholesaler. And then they're going to pass on the exchange and start construction. Now they are going to add a green brick there and a red brick over there, and that is all they are going to add for the moment. They think they should probably slow roll it and not pay more bricks in this moment. They want to see uh, what other bricks they get in the next turn, and they want to stay flexible. Although they, of course, do have this princess, as well as this wholesaler, which they could have used to try to get rid of those bricks and draw something else that works better for them. But honestly, these bricks were pretty good. The odds of them bumping into another purple is pretty low, and they needed more than just one purple in order to be able to complete that commission. You know what? I keep changing my mind, and I think for them, they are going to add one more brick over here. That means they have to pay one brick, and they are okay with getting rid of one of these yellows. After that, they have to tear down any towers they did not add to, and that is this one here. Half will go into the bag, and the other half will go into their storage. After that, they could complete a commission, but neither of these towers are tall enough, so that has finished their turn. This means that we can go, and I think it makes sense for us to spend one white brick onto the botch so that we don't have to suffer that effect in order to take the patrician, which has six of these bricks, and the botch also has six, so I think this is just fine for us. Also, that is going to be our second patrician, and I think we should certainly use one of these to get rid of our disgrace. That means we have one more in our hand that we could use to get rid of another negative point card, or that we could use to stop an event that would be particularly harmful to us on our turn. 
So let's slide these things down. And the next card is another tribute. Wow, there's two of them out there. And after that, let's skip the exchange and move right into construction. I think we should add this here. And at this point, we could add another brick without paying for it, but I am worried about those two tributes coming down the line. If we activated one of them, we could use our partition to stop that effect from happening, although that tribute effect could be more harmful to our opponents, especially if we don't have any towers under construction. So I think let's just uh, only add that one brick, and then we don't have to tear anything down, and we can now complete this commission. That means we will have no towers out there uh, for our next turn, so we could potentially take that tribute, and it won't even hurt us, but it could hurt our opponents. And of course, this is going to be our sixth commission. We only have one left, and if we completed that one, that would trigger the end of the game. So we have some of our bricks that we're hoping to work towards that. So we can place this here, and honestly, I'm kind of surprised at this point in the game there is still a level 4 uh, commission for a white tower, but it seems like we've been prioritizing other things. Uh, there's still a bunch of cheap ones over here for blue, although there are only 10 of those blue bricks in the bag. Now this is going to get us 3 victory points. Well, our turn is done, so that means that the yellow player can go, and they have decided to place a green brick onto Botch so that they can skip it, and then they are going to take Collapse. Uh, they could skip that and go to Tribute if they wanted to, but uh, they think Collapse is probably going to be slightly better for them, considering they don't have to spend the extra brick, and this does have the bricks that they need. Also, they have a very small tower that they can get rid of, which is not that big of a deal for them. So that is going to go away with the Collapse effect, and then we can slide the rest of these over, and the next card is an Alchemist. After that, they can do an exchange, and they can do this at a 2-for-1 instead of a 3-for-1, and they have decided to exchange these two yellow for that red over there on the warehouse. Next up, they can start their construction. After considering their options, they are just going to add two red bricks to that tower. They could add another one. <laughs> Last turn they did, and it actually worked out well for them because it was some collapse fodder. Uh, they could place this blue out because currently there are still a couple of the smaller blue commissions available, but they are also worried about over committing to that, and there are those tributes coming along, so they are just going to hold on to this. Uh, now that means they are done constructing, they don't have to tear any of these towers down, and they are then going to complete this size 6 red commission. As you can see, that's associated with the number 2 balcony, so that is going to get them 10 victory points instead of the normal 6. So that is going to bring the yellow player from 21 up to 31. This also means that the third balcony is now available. That is the only white commission that can be completed, and it does require 8 of those white bricks, but of course there are 25 of them in the bag. Heck, we can see four of them are over here on botch already, so it's possible one of the players might shoot for that because 13 points is quite a lot. Uh, also, no one has completed a size 8 yet, and that will come along with an extra 4 points, so this is quite an incentivized commission for people to try and go for. Well, yellow is done with their turn, so the red player can go, and they've decided to play their princess in order to take this alchemist. The next card to come out is going to be a scandal, which is worth negative 3 points to the player who takes it. Next up, they can do an exchange, and they are going to do that. In this case, they are going to give up two of their blues and a white in order to take this red brick from the scandal. They did think about putting their purples out instead of the blues, but currently the red player is the only one with a purple commission, and so they are trying to sandbag that, make it harder for anyone else to complete any of these, because right now they are in the lead for five victory points at the end of the game, and they're hoping they can stall out to that point. If there is a tie on any of these towers, then the higher of those commissions is going to break the tie, and they are hoping they can make that happen, but we'll just have to see. So this red can be added over here, and now they can start construction. Now they are certainly going to add a red and a green, and then they are going to play their alchemist to turn this purple into another red. So that means the purple will go into the bag, they can then pull a red out of the bag, and then they would like to play this. They can see that tributes are coming up soon, and they really did want to complete this commission. Uh, they're not going to complete that one, but they do have greens to be able to pay for one or maybe even two tributes. Now, at this point, they have added three bricks, so that is going to cost them one. So they're going to throw this other purple back into the bag, and they're hoping that these purples do not come back out again. Next up, they don't have to tear down any towers, and then they are going to complete this size five red commission. As you can see, that is going to give the red player four victory points, bringing them up to 21. 
Well, that's finished their turn, so we get to go, and I think let's just take this botch. It has a ton of these bricks on it, and it does mean that we will, I suppose, have to play some of them because of our brick limit, and we might run into some tributes, but still, this is so many bricks, and I would hate to have to pay a brick to take this tribute just to have it not really affect most of us. Obviously, the red player would be affected, but they were planning ahead for that. You know what? I think we're just going to move forward with it and to take this botch. We don't have any uh, towers under construction, so that effect is not going to hit us, but we do have to keep in mind these tributes on the horizon, uh, one of which actually is right at our front door. Now the next card is an architect, and now it's time for us to construct. As you can see, we currently have 13 bricks in our area, and we can't hold more than 10 at the end of our turn, so we should certainly start some construction. But of course, we do have to keep in mind the tribute that's going to be happening probably very soon, and the other one that's also happening soon as well. I guess we can start by constructing a white tower. Uh, we can put two of our bricks down there, and at this point, we are still one over our limit. But honestly, I think that is okay. I'd rather lose one of these bricks than start a tower that we are then going to have to pay tribute on very soon. So let's just stop there, not tear any of our towers down, and then get rid of one of these back to the bag. And I don't see any reason why we should have this purple brick given the other bricks that we have in our area. So we have discarded that down and our turn is over. After that, the yellow player can go, and considering they have no towers under construction, they have no problem taking this tribute. That means they don't pay anything for the tribute. Then we are going to have to pay one of our white bricks in order to pay for that one, and we are forced to do this. And then the red player is going to pay one green to pay tribute for that tower. And unfortunately, there is another tribute very close on this row. Now, after that, the next card is a workshop. And now yellow can continue with their turn. Now they're going to use their Ponte Vecchio to do a two for one exchange. They will get rid of this red as well as this yellow. In order to trade for this purple right here, there is another one over there and it's possible they're hoping to exchange for that one on their next turn. So this will get added into their area and they've decided they're not actually going to construct anything. That tribute would really mess with their plans and they would uh, rather have that happen before they build their next towers. So they are just going to hold it tight where they are and that will finish up their turn because they are indeed under 10 of these bricks and they have three cards total. This means the red player can go and they are going to take this warehouse. Now they already have a warehouse, but they are allowed to take this. You can't have two of them at the same time though, so this is just going to go right into the discard pile. Now all of these are going to slide down, and the next card is a privilege. That one will give three points to the player who builds the next size six commission, of course after that card has been activated. Moving on, the red player is going to start construction, and they are going to add three of these green bricks to that tower. This is going to cost them one of their other bricks, and they will get rid of a white one. And then they don't have to tear down a tower, and then they are going to complete this commission. This is a size 7 tower. They would have loved to be able to get to the size 8, but considering there is just one green out here on the market at this point, and there is a tribute that's probably going to be happening soon, they figured it probably made more sense just to cash this in now. So the 7 is over there, and that is going to be worth 7 victory points to them, which is going to bring them up to 28. After that, they are done with their turn, which means we get to go, and this tribute is still out there. Now, part of me feels like maybe I should just rip off the Band-Aid and take that right now. Uh, we could take this wholesaler, but then we're going to be worried about the tribute coming down for the rest of the next round. And also, the wholesaler doesn't have any white on it, so I think maybe going for this does make sense. Actually, hold on a second. I just realized this wholesaler has a blue brick on it, and we have two blue bricks already. Now, miraculously enough, the three spot on the blue tower over here is not done yet. So maybe let's just do that instead of trying to get our size eight tower with the whites. I think we should maybe just try to end the game now. So I have changed my mind. We are not going to take the tribute. Instead, we are going to take this wholesaler. And then these are all going to slide down. The next card is another warehouse. After that, I think let's do an exchange. We are obviously not going towards red, so we can get rid of those, and we can also get rid of a green. And we can exchange these three for one of these blues on the scandal. 
That will go over here, and we have four of them. And I just realized that we actually have this patrician, so maybe it would have made sense to just take this scandal by spending some of our bricks, and then we could use the patrician to not take that penalty, but let's just stick with the turn that we have. In fact, I also just realized that we have this saboteur, and we never actually used it. That would remove one brick from the top of another tower from an opponent. That probably would have been good to use earlier in the game, but we just missed that opportunity, unfortunately. Sorry about that. Uh, either way, let's now start construction. And this turn is going to be all about building a blue tower. So we want to put these four out there, which is going to cost us three bricks. We don't have to worry about this over here because we are certainly not going to be getting up to a size eight commission. And at this point, realistically, we could build up to two more bricks, but that's not going to help us out because this will be our last turn since we are about to trigger the end of the game. So let's go ahead and spend three bricks as payment. And then after that, we can rip this down. Of course, half will go to our storage and the other half will go back to the bag. And then let's complete this commission, which will be our last of the game. This is a size four, so that is going to get us three victory points, bringing us from 21 up to 24. Now, after that, we have officially placed our final commission, which means we can take this, which is going to be worth five victory points to us at the end of the game. And at this point, the end game has been triggered. So we are not going to take any more turns because we triggered the end game, and each one of our opponents will get one more turn. Well, our turn is done, so now the yellow player can take their final turn of the game. And they have decided to take this architect. They are going to place a white brick onto this tribute as well as this scandal. And then they can add all of these into their storage. After that, they're going to do a two for one trade, getting rid of these two white bricks. And they're going to trade those for this purple brick over here. Although I suppose technically these cards should have been slid down first and a new one should have been revealed. After that, it's time for construction, and they want to build a size 5 purple tower. Now that is going to cost them 6 bricks, although they have a workshop, so that will cost 5. And then they have a mason, so this is actually going to cost just 2 of their bricks, so they'll get rid of these 2 here. Now this is going to be discarded, and then they don't tear any towers down, and then they're going to fulfill this commission, although they're going to do it with this architect, so this is technically a size 6 purple tower. That means they can place this over here, which is going to give them seven more points, which brings them from 31 up to 38. Well, their turn is done, which means the red player can go. And for their final turn, they're going to start by playing this wholesaler. Now, they're going to use this on the tribute over here. That means they're going to get rid of all of these bricks. That is five. Those are going to go back into the bag, and then five more are going to be revealed. And they don't necessarily have to choose the card that they did the wholesaler action on. They just want to see more options. So let's see five more bricks. And you know what? That is pretty good. Uh, they are going to take this tribute and it won't have any effect because no one currently has any towers under construction. After that, these can slide down and we can add a new card and this is a storehouse fire. So let's go ahead and add four bricks onto it. Next up, they can do a three for one exchange and they are gonna get rid of these three bricks and swap those out for this blue on the scandal, <laughs> so that card has a ton of bricks on it, although of course no one will end up taking this card. That blue can go over here, and now they will do construction. Now they are going to build a size 3 blue tower. That is going to cost them one of their bricks back to the bag, and then they don't tear any towers down, and they can complete this commission, so they were able to just barely squeak out a pretty good last turn. In this case, that will place their commission over here, which is going to give them two points, bringing them up to 30. Well, at this point, the game has come to an end, so we can now start the final scoring. The first thing that we are going to do is score the majority bonuses at the top of each of these towers. Again, those points will go to the player who has the most commissions on that specific tower, and if there's a tie, then it goes to the player who has the highest commission on that tower. So let's start over here with the white tower. We have two commissions compared to the one of both of our opponents, so that means we have the most, and that is going to give us two victory points, bringing us to 26. After that, on the yellow tower, there is a tie between us and the yellow player. Unfortunately, their commission is slightly better, so they are going to break that tie, and that is going to give yellow three points, bringing them to 41. Moving on, at the green tower, red has a majority, so they are going to get three points. And then at the red tower, yellow has a majority, so that is going to give them four points. Next up at the blue tower, we have a majority, so we are going to get four points, bringing us up to 30. And then at the purple tower, there is a tie between yellow and red, and yellow is going to break that tie. They put that down on the very last turn of the game. So that is going to give them five victory points, which is a nice jump considering it was very close to being five points for the red player instead. 
After we've scored all of these, the next thing that happens is we are going to get five points because we were the player who started the end game. So that is going to bring us up to 35. Now, once that is done, it's now time to score any of the celebration cards that we have in our hand. We have just one of these, and that is worth a straight three victory points. So that will bring us to a final score of 38. After that, yellow has none of those celebration cards. And finally, the red player has two. This fame card is going to give them three points, which will bring them up to 36. And recognition will give them one point for every one of their level three and four commissions down here. And it looks like red has three of those. So that is three more points, bringing them up to 39. So with that, we now have our final scores. It looks like Yellow was able to have a pretty sizable victory right over there. We were super close to our opponent, but unfortunately we did come in last place. When we look back out at the board, it seems like the Yellow player did a lot more of the slightly higher commissions, and I think that turned into significantly more points from these majorities at the top because they did break a couple of these ties in their favor. In particular, if Yellow hadn't built that out, they would be down to 45 points, and Red would be up to 44, so it looks like Yellow still would have won, although it would have been a lot closer. Um, now, either way, this game is done, and before I wrap up the tutorial, I would like to briefly come back to the Campanile card. Now again, during setup, it suggests that if you are new to the game, you should not play with this card, and if you're not, then you can shuffle this into the deck. Now this is a church card, so that means once somebody activates this card, it goes out onto a church card spot. And once that happens, there is a new restriction in place. Every single player will now have to build a size 3 white tower, which is essentially a white bell tower, and they have to do that before they can complete any other commissions. Once they have completed that three, they put a commission down on top of this, but that does not actually count as a completed commission. And only after a player has put a commission on top of this are they able to complete other commissions. Once all players have put a commission token on top of this, then they will get those tokens back, and this will go into the discard pile. So when this comes into play, it could certainly disrupt plans, as people have to scramble to build a size 3 white tower before they can complete any of their other towers. Of course, this does show up on the card row, and so you can plan ahead for it, just like the tributes that we saw coming several times throughout the game. Well, at this point, I believe I've covered just about all of the rules to the game, so that means this tutorial has come to a close. I hope that you've enjoyed learning how to play Forense. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.